Hey nerds, so instead of doing one or two deck techs for the new set Bloomborough, I'm going to share five unique deck ideas featuring the new commanders from Bloomborough, with three additional honorable mentions for a total of eight deck ideas. But don't worry, I will be going over some of the key cards for these ideas, and also I have a Discord server now, it's a great place to hang out with the community members and suggest video ideas. I have a link to that in the video description below. Alright, with all the housekeeping out of the way, let's get into it. Let's kick things off with the honorable mentions. First up is Vren the Relentless. So I had the idea with this commander is that we can give other players tokens using cards like Genesis Chamber, Crow and Horse, and Eggcorn Catapult. Then using a card like Pestilence or whatever other cheap board wipes we can find to exile those tokens. We'll probably also exile their creatures, but, but hey, that's fine with me. Now, I don't know how many effects are in Demir that let us give other players tokens or like artifacts that do that. So definitely let me know in the comments if you can think of any that I missed. I know Forbidden Orchard is definitely one of them. Next is Yugara, Eater of All, Golgari Stacks. Yugara turns all creatures, including our opponents, into artifact foods, so they become artifacts, which means Karn the Great Creator turns them off. Now you just slam a Nature's Revolt, suddenly all of your opponent's lands are 2-2 creatures, which are artifacts which can't be activated because of Karn, which means they're locked out of the game. You're in black, so you have plenty of access to tutors, Demonic Tutor, Diabolic Tutor, Mastermind's Acquisition. You should be able to get this lockout really consistently. It's just a bit too mean for my liking, but hey, to each their own. Maybe I'll do it in Dual Commander. And the final honorable mention is Ziana Valley's voice, Jeskai Legends. Ziana gives all of your creatures Offspring 2, which is essentially when you cast it, it's a kicker 2, and when they enter, they, you get a 1-1 one -one token copy of that creature. Now, because of the legend rule, we would have to sacrifice one of the two, probably the token, not the original. However, there are cards that allow us to turn off the legend rule. Cards like Mirror Box, Mirror Gallery, and Kadric Soul Kindler. Kadric specifically turns off the legend rules for tokens, which is perfect to this deck. You could also play clone effects such as Spark Double, which just ignore the legend rule altogether, and some of the more expensive Sakashima to bypass this too. The idea is a little fragile, which is why it's in the Honorable Mentions category, but I think you could do some really cute things here. Now for the real ones. First up is Miss Bumbleflower Voltron. Bumbleflower was the face commander for the new precons, specifically the Bant Hug one, and it's an incredibly powerful commander that provides card draw, buffs for your creatures, and built-in evasion. Now, her counter ability can target herself, which means if we give her equipment like, I don't know, Shadow Spear, or Locks on Warhammer, or Basilisk Collar, we can then put a bunch of counters on her, give her flying for a turn. She has Vigilance, and she's a 1-5, which is a pretty big butt. And then crack in there for a bunch of Voltron damage. Now, you do give opponents cards, which isn't great for a Voltron deck, especially since you don't want your commander to, you know, be removed. So you want to load up on protection spells like Blossoming Defense, Tamiyo Safekeeping, and Tyvar Stand. And you can also play something like Narset Parter of Veils to turn off the card draw you're giving to opponents. And you don't have to play pure Voltron with this commander either. As long as you have enough creatures, you can easily turn anything into a massive threat really quick. Next up is Balin Token Pile. Now the idea for this actually came from one of my friends. They have an Atla Palani Nest Tender Egg Pile deck, where they have like 150 creatures and every game they shuffle in a random 35. This way the games don't get stale, and sometimes they just oops into a combo like Kiki Jiki and Zealous Conscripts. I've seen it, it was really funny. So the idea here is pretty much the same. You get all of your favorite token generators. Now they don't have to be creatures, but you could do that. Put them into a pile and shuffle random ones in every game. Balin's strong enough on their own, so no matter what tokens you have, I think the deck will work just fine. And this gives some variety with the deck. Some of my personal favorites would be Pest Infestation, Elspeth's Sun's Champion, and Farmer Cotton. But honestly, just pick your favorites, throw them in a pile, and you'll be good to go. And let me know what your favorite token producer is in the comment section down below. It also helps in drive engagement for this video so more people see it. Next up is the other Bant Precon Commander, Mr. Foxglove Combat Tricks. Now, Mr. Foxglove, like I just said, is the other commander that you can get in that Group Hug Precon. Whenever you attack with him, you draw cards equal to the difference from your hand to the opponent who's at your attacking hand. I probably didn't explain that well, you can just kind of read the card on screen here. There is a last line of text where if you don't draw cards, you get to put a creature into play, but honestly, I find that just be a boring effect. It's easy to break, it's not creative, I don't really care. What I care about is drawing a bunch of cards. 
So why don't we load up on combat tricks, attack people, dump our hand at instant speed, and then refill it with our attack trigger. This is great because it is lifelink, so we get some protection, some padding against retaliatory attacks. And we can include cards like Aetherflux Reservoir, since we A, will be casting a whole bunch of spells in a turn, and B, have lifelink, so we can get all our life back, and then hopefully just ping a player or two out of the game. I also want to include River Song's Diary, since we can easily get a number of combat tricks underneath it. Also, Mavindia, Student's Advocate, will let us recast spells from the graveyard. If you want to go even further, you could try building a creatureless foxglove deck, but that's a little too spicy for me. Next up is Gev Persist Combo. So Gev gives creatures plus one plus one counters for each opponent who lost life this turn. So with Persist creatures, you just go infinite because they die and they come back with a minus one minus one counter. Gev then puts the plus one plus one counter on them. So then that removes the minus one minus one counters and you can sacrifice them again. So cards like Murderous Redcap, Puppeteer Click, and Putrid Goblin, I never remember Putrid Goblin, go infinite with any sack outlet like Astronaut's Altar, Goblin Bombardment. I'm sure there are more that I... Grinding Station, I think? Blasting Station? One of the stations, it's on screen here. But we can take that combo even further with Cauldron of Souls and Draw Scorpion. Cauldron of Souls gives any number of target creatures you control persist, and Draw Scorpion says when an it or another artifact creature you control dies, untap target artifact. So you tap the Cauldron, give a bunch of creatures persist, sack a bunch of them. When Draw Scorpion dies, you can untap Cauldron, they all come back. You can tap Cauldron again, giving them all Persist, and just infinitely loop this. It also works with Infernal Captor, but you need another Persist creature in play, or a creature that makes a token when it enters so you can exploit it by sacrificing that token, and then you gain control of your own Cauldron of Souls, and then you can untap it. I'm sure there are more combos that you could figure out for this deck, or if you just want to build a Lizard deck, you can do that. And I hope this inspired you to build our new favorite Rakdos Lizard. Which is a weird sentence to say. There's only two I really like, but that's beside the point. And finally, we have Zoraline, Cosmos Caller, or Zav Vampires. Now, obviously Zoraline wants us to build bats with that first line of text that gains us a bunch of life whenever we attack with bats. But what is a vampire except a bat with feet? Well, I guess bats have feet. What are vampires except humanoid bats? Yeah, that, that's fine. Now, listen, jokes aside, there are like 19 vampires in Orzhov that actually make bats in some way, so we can include all of those. And with over 150 vampires that are three mana or less, you have plenty that you can recur using Zorlane's ability. Like I said, you do lose some of the life gain benefits from the first ability, but vampires are pretty good at draining people, so it's not a huge issue. And Zorlane's recursion is going to be pretty powerful in this deck. I just wish we could play it as a Lure's Companion deck. That would be pretty sweet. If you're looking for some vampire suggestions for the deck, I think there's some obvious ones like Blood Artist, Vito Thorn of the Dusk Rose, and Cool Celebrant. All of these gain you life or deal damage to opponents when creatures die. They're all solid. And there's some bats too you should really add. Basilica Screecher has Extort, which is just incredibly powerful in Commander. Dusk Star Augur is the new flying bob with offspring, so you get two bobs. And if your deck is a low enough mana value, you really don't care if you're taking six a turn to draw two, which is the worst case scenario, hopefully. And then Life Breed Duo is a bat soul sister, so you can gain a bunch of life when more bats enter and your vampires. All in all, I think this deck actually has some legs to it, and I would love to see it out in the wild. If you build any of these, I would love to see those lists. You can share them over on the Discord or in the comment section down below. If you want more videos of this kind of style, definitely let me know or give this video a like so I know you like it. Also, double check to make sure you're subscribed. A lot of my viewers aren't, and it's an easy way to help out the channel. And then ring that bell to get notifications when all my videos go live. And check out some of the other videos shown on screen here you might really like. Alrighty, nerds. I'll see you in the next one.